Live, the morning show from CBS Local 2. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, February 20th. I'm Tom Tucker. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Daniels. Let's begin with a quick look at the top stories making headlines this morning. Well, the big talker today is the weather. A winter storm is hanging over much of the West Coast and is causing plenty of problems here in the desert. Yesterday, high winds kicked up, making it tough to drive and covering the usual valley roads in a thick layer of sand. Bulldozers had to come in and clear it away. Heavy rain in Ukaipa last night did not stop people from gathering for a candlelight vigil. They honored fallen San Bernardino Sheriff's Detective Jeremiah McCabe. He was shot and killed by Christopher Dorner during last week's standoff in Big Bear. I only live about two miles from here. Hopefully we'll get home. Well, snow left hundreds of drivers stranded on the mountain highway between L.A. and Bakersfield. The CHP shut down a 60-mile stretch of Highway 58 last night because of the storm. Highway patrol officers and road crews work through the night to help stuck motorists get off the highway. And of course, we're talking about Interstate 5 there, the grapevine. And thankfully, uh, Carlene, we don't have snow problems uh, like that in our neck of the woods. But roadways are still a bit wet this morning. Yes, they are. Higher elevations getting that snow right now for us along the valley floor. We are just getting the passing showers. So we'll continue to have this as the area of low pressure moves just to the east of us. So the center of the low is actually a little bit hovering over Phoenix. So that's going to continue to push through. As that happens, we'll have some snow in the works in the high desert, or excuse me, in the high desert this morning, as well as also in the mountains. We still have winter storm warnings in effect, as well as advisories. Along the valley floor, we'll continue to see the passing clouds for today. We have those slick roads, but the thing is most of the uh, sky is actually clear above us. So as we go into today, we're talking about right now, we still have most of that concentration over the mountain areas. Big Bear getting it right now, and we have mountain snow in the works likely throughout most of the day. So 62 degrees will be the high on the backside of that area of low pressure. And also keep in mind most of the clouds hovering over the mountain, still dealing with the wind conditions though. We do have a wind advisory, so it has been downgraded from a high wind warning yesterday to wind advisory all the way into this evening for much of the Coachella Valley and also throughout most of Southern California. We'll take a look at what you can expect for today and also into your weekend. Quite a difference is on the way. All right, uh, speaking of the winds, uh, high winds yesterday did not help firefighters battling a fire at a mobile home park in North Palm Springs. Take a look at the gusty conditions there. The flames quickly spread to three mobile homes, destroying each one of them. Fire officials say more than a dozen people are without a home this morning. One of them sent us this video as they watched the flames destroy everything they own. Neighboring homes were also heavily damaged. All the smoke damage, all the whole side of our mobile home, everything, everything smoke damage, everything caught on fire on the side. We mostly lost mostly a lot of our stuff. Now, firefighters say the mobile home park does not have a fire hydrant, which made putting out that fire even that much more difficult. The Red Cross is helping out those impacted by the fire. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Well, in Kansas City, cadaver dogs are searching through the rubble after an explosion leveled a popular restaurant. That's right. The blast last night literally blew the roof off the building and damaged several other nearby businesses. More than a dozen people went to the hospital, two in critical condition. So far, no deaths reported, but rescuers are still digging through the wreckage for people, two people still missing. Investigators say a gas leak possibly caused by a car crash may have caused this explosion. Back here in the Southland, a gruesome discovery at a Los Angeles hotel. Police say a maintenance worker found a woman's body inside a water tank on top of the building yesterday morning. The worker went up to check out the tank after hotel guests reportedly complained about low water pressure. This morning, investigators have confirmed that the body is that of a 21-year-old, Elisa Lamb. She's a Canadian tourist who disappeared last month. Police have not said how she may have gotten into the water tank. Closer to home, living conditions at the rundown Duraville Mobile Home Park in the East Valley may get even worse before they get better. The few people still living at the trailer park, now controlled by Riverside County, say they have not had trash hauling services for three weeks. And they say they're still paying for the service. Tom Flynn is now in charge of Duraville and says he knows about the problem, but he claims there's nothing he can do about it. Flynn says there's not enough money coming in from the few residents still living there to pay for trash hauling services and to fix other problems at the park. 50 years old, John F. Kennedy was president. 
when many of these homes were, were built. In the years they've been out in this area, and certainly since they got to Duraville, um, there's been no maintenance on the units, and most of them have fallen apart. Now, the electrical and sewer systems at Duraville are also in disrepair. Glenn says the only hope is for private companies or nonprofits to come in and lend a hand. Wow, what a mess. Yeah, that's yeah, mm. very unfortunate. Well, it looks like allergy season is following right on the heels of flu season. Coming up this morning, a look at what local doctors are treating in this week's What's Going Around. Plus, are you looking to buy a car anytime soon? Well, we'll tell you why you might have to pay to take a test drive when you head to the dealership. And later on this morning, the Duchess of Cambridge showing off her baby bump for the first time since announcing she's preggers. Allergies are beginning to kick up again here in the Valley. CBS Local 2's Brooke Berry takes a look at where local doctors are seeing all this uh, at its worst and this week's What's Going Around. Good morning. The flu is still flaring up in some parts of the valley. That's just one thing local doctors are talking about when looking at what's going around the area where you live. Seasonal allergies are on the upswing in Palm Springs. Dr. Arian says people are coming with congestion and upper respiratory symptoms, making it very hard to diagnose. A flare up of the flu kept him busy last week with people suffering from all the classic symptoms, body aches, joint pain, malaise, fatigue, vomiting, diarrhea, cough, cold and congestion. And people might be falling off their New Year's diets because he continues to see people gaining weight. Dr. Ruiz is seeing an increase in viral sinusitis in La Quinta. This virus brings on the mucus production along with a sinus headache and fatigue. She tells us it generally starts with a slight sore throat and lasts between 7 to 10 days. Over-the-counter treatments including sinus rinse aid seem to help the most. The flu is also going around. Tamiflu works, but the sooner it started, the better. But if it is not treated, it does last a full two weeks. Respiratory and influenza-like illness continues to dominate walk-in office visits in Coachella. Dr. Curry tells us the flu is tapering off there, but turning into pneumonia among the elderly. Children are coming in for treatment of fever blisters in their throats that come from person-to-person -person contact. And because it's a virus, there's no good treatment, but keep your kids' hands washed and steer them toward jello and soup so it's not so painful to eat. And that's a look at what's going around the area where you live. For more what's going around, check out our link on cbslocal2.com. Brooke Berry, CBS Local 2. Well, would you want to buy a car from a dealership that charged you to take a test drive? We want them to, uh, you know, give us the same amount of gas that they left with. Coming up this morning, why you might have to chip in for gas the next time you try out a new car. Area of low pressure from that storm system yesterday is starting to move through the Great Basin and out of our area, but we still have some snow in the works of the mountains and wind conditions pretty high today. We'll take a look at your complete forecast after the break. You're watching the CBS Local 2 Morning Show. Is it safe to say that the worst of it's over for us? Definitely safe to say that the worst of it's over. Actually, that's until we get into noon. That's when the winter storm warnings lifted and also for today, a little bit calmer than it was yesterday, but we still have a wind advisory that's in effect downgraded from a high wind warning of yesterday. So it's kind of a give and take with the storm system moving out. Now we can see that most of that uh, precipitation is actually right over the mountain areas. Big Bear getting that right now. Still a winter storm warning in effect all the way until noon this afternoon. High desert also having rain as well well as a mix of the snow moving in the higher elevations and also there is a winter weather advisory in effect that will expire this morning. So as we get into the day progressively as that area of low pressure moves out, things will start to get better and then by tomorrow we'll just have a few clouds in the works but a whole lot of sunshine and slightly warmer temperatures. 44 degrees right now in Palm Springs and in thermal 37 and 29 Palms. Also the winds are picking up in 29 Palms at 12 miles per hour, 20 in Blythe where there is a wind advisory in effect and lighter winds in Palm Springs. Springs and thermal only at three miles per hour. Also the gusts picking up in Blythe at 26. San Diego even getting some gusts right now at 29 miles per hour. Now we do have that area of low pressure over the Great Basin, so the storm system is pushing out, but it's filtering in that cold air right behind it. So as we go into today, don't put the sweaters away just yet, except for snowbirds. They, uh, 
Yeah, you're kind of used to this cooler weather as we get into today. A high that will be in the low 60s. So once again, we're still experiencing some pretty chilly temperatures in the morning and then turning into cool ones into the afternoon hours below the norm of where we're supposed to be for this time of the year. Now we are experiencing those 20s as well as teens for wind conditions this afternoon. 1 p.m. We're going to have uh, right below the Banning Pass in the 20s, high desert in the teens and 20s, and even into tomorrow we will continue to have winds picking up, pausing the clock at 4 p.m. for your Thursday. Uh, 25 miles per hour in Desert Hot Springs, 20 in Morongo, hitting the teens in the desert. So Palm Springs at 19. Keep that in mind for tomorrow. We'll have those winds still picking up, just a little bit more breezy than high winds. As we go into today, wind advisory until this evening. Winter storm warning in effect all the way into the afternoon hours. That would be for our local mountains. A winter weather advisory for the uh, high desert. So as we go into today, we're still experiencing most of that moisture sticking around along the valley floor. Not too much activity, just seeing the clouds, breezy winds, 62, and then warming into the weekend. Well, the pain at the pump isn't letting up, and it's taking a toll on just about everybody. Gas prices rose another cent overnight to an average of $4.26 a gallon here in Riverside County. And with prices so high, some car dealerships like this one in Sacramento, we'll see mm -hmm. a dealership in a second there. One dealership in particular now charging people to test drive their cars. The owner says it's costing him too much to let customers drive around, so they have to fill up before coming back to the lot. If that sounds excessive, consider this. We have to pay for all the gas, and you know, when you have 70, 80 different cars, it gets real expensive. Now, the dealership's owner says it takes about uh, $45 to fill up each car, and that equals about $3,000 for all of his vehicles up for sale, and he says that's just a cost that uh, he can't afford anymore. And that brings us to our Facebook question of the day. Would you pay to test drive a car at the dealership or go somewhere else? Head to our Facebook page and let us know what you think. Pretty interesting. It is. Would you? Cost of doing business. Would yeah. you? You know, I don't know. I mean, if I if I if I really liked the car and that was the only option, maybe I'd go that route. But I can't imagine it takes that much time. They only let you drive around the block anyway. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look now at the lowest gas price available here in the desert. Speaking of gas, how about uh, almost four bucks a gallon at the fast trip? Three ninety nine on Harrison and Avenue 52 in Coachella. Now you can always find the lowest prices around the valley on our website. All you have to do is log on to cbslocal2.com and click on the gas tracker. In Valley High School Sports, CIF playoffs continue in both basketball and soccer. Plus, some of the best amateur golfers in the world battle each other in high winds during play yesterday in La Quinta. Sports is next. And coming up after sports, a first look at the royal baby bump. Princess Kate stepping out for the first time since announcing the big news. Very few scenarios in sports offer a more dramatic reality than a single elimination playoff bracket, and that's probably why we embrace the postseason the way we do. It all comes down to one game. Last night, that one game for Desert Christian Academy happening on their home floor in the CIF Division 5 Boys Basketball Tournament. Prep quarterfinal showdown with third-ranked San Gabriel Academy. The Conquerors played catch-up most of the night. Trenton Smith cutting into that San Gabriel lead. But the Eagles, I mean, they had their way. Everything, and I mean everything falling, including this. Josh Ajayi from a tough angle. San Gabriel building on a 20-point lead in the fourth and understandably a subdued crowd. Moments later, Roger Cordy for D.C., a bright spot. He goes over 1,000 points in his career last night. Then Trenton Smith, how about one more time on the assist from Hunter Hurria. Good fight to the end from the Conquerors, but the real story of the night, the Eagles, it couldn't miss. They shot over 70% from the three-point line. San Gabriel into the final four with an 89-59 win at Desert Christian. The Conquerors disappointed, obviously, but already getting set for a promising follow-up campaign. I'll take away that I have kids that have a lot of heart, and uh, we don't lose a lot. We're going to have a lot coming back this coming year. Um, and with what we've got coming back, I really feel like we're going to build on, on what we did this year. 
The prep playoffs hit the quarterfinals last night in Division 6 boys basketball as well. And would you look at this? Desert Chapel, the Eagles out of Palm Springs go on the road and win at Cal Lutheran 60 to 54. They're in to the final four. And in girls soccer, congratulations to the La Quinta Blackhawks. They post their 15th shutout of the season, a 1-0 victory over Ontario in the playoffs. LQ has CIF title dreams well alive. Yesterday's high winds and cooler temperatures certainly created a new challenge for college golf teams playing in the prestige at PGA West. 15 storied programs battling each other and the elements for a chance to raise the team trophy after today's final round. We'll call yesterday moving day. Conditions on the Greg Norman course got much tougher as the day progressed. This footage was shot at about 430 in the afternoon. And look at that win on number 14. There's Cameron Wilson of Stanford. He had a solid round working, leading the field at that point. His cart being pushed uphill by the wind. Wilson had this 18 foot birdie try. Misses low side and the wind just takes it right on past to about five feet. Now he needs this comebacker for par and Cameron wants that one back. A dreaded three putt for bogey dropped back into a tie after that. As for the group right behind him, Matt Hansen of UC Davis and his coach Cy Williams will like this beautiful second shot set up a very makeable birdie try. He'd par the hole. Nice job by Matt. Looking at your current individual leaders as we enter today, Chris Williams and two others lead the way at four under par. Team scores look like this. UCLA made a late day charge. They're six under as a team and lead the field. We'll have your champion later on CBS Local 2. Keep it here on CBS Local 2 this morning. To save on eats, you'll like uh, today's desert deal of the day. How about half off lunch at Trio Restaurant in Palm Springs? Mm. Normally $20, you can have it for just 10 bucks. Oh, they have the best chicken curry salad. Get this deal, go to DesertRealDeals.com, buy the coupon, print it out, and take it with you. All right, a Texas mom got four times the Valentine's Day gift after giving birth to quadruplets. Oh, but these aren't any ordinary set of four. The boys actually come in pairs. That's right. They are actually two sets of identical twins. Doctors say the odds of this happening about one in 70 million. And of course, I just couldn't believe it. If I wasn't already laying down on that table, I would have been on the floor. Basically, I just pumped my fist and I was like, yes, home run. <laughs> well, it's, it's especially interesting because she used no fertility drugs. Hmm. The babies are named Ace, Blaine, Cash, and Dylan. You get it? A, B, C, D. Very cool. They each weighed in about uh, three to four pounds. And doctors say mom and the babies are doing just fine. Congratulations to them. And they want another one. They want a girl. Good. <laughs> and speaking of baby news, the Duchess of Cambridge showed off her little baby bump for the very first time since announcing she is pregnant. Yesterday, Kate Middleton visited at an addiction treatment center that she is a patron for. As she left the building, Kate was presented with some flowers, as we can see there, by two young children. And the Duchess is now four months pregnant, and we still don't know if the couple is expecting a boy or a girl. Oh, they should keep that a secret yeah. from all of us. I, I agree, you know, yeah. a little privacy. Yeah. Well, some winter weather is causing a lot of trouble for drivers across California. Coming up this morning, a look at some of the problems the storm is causing here at home. That and another look at your top stories coming up. Live, the morning show from CBS Local 2. It is half past the hour on this Wednesday. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Daniels. And I'm Tom Tucker. Great to have you with us. Time now for another look at your top news this morning. Some wintry weather pushing through California is causing travel troubles up and down the Golden State. CBS Local 2, Samantha Cortese, uh, we threw her out in the elements. <laughs> she is at Date Palm overpass on Interstate 10, and they've got some planned construction, but it could be put on hold tonight because of that bad weather. How's it going out there, Sam? It's cold, Jen. <laughs> it's a little bit cold. I've got my hand warmers out here this morning, um, but that planned construction may be put on hold. Calif California Highway Patrol tells us if the wind and the rains continue, they won't have that planned closure from 8 to 4 overnight, but we could be seeing the effects of this winter storm uh, early this morning. Take a look behind me. You can see uh, the fire truck here. Just last night, a big rig 
Actually, as we were on our way to this live shot, a big rig ran into the side of the freeway right underneath us at this overpass. And that's not the first big rig to get in trouble here with these high winds and weather. High winds may have caused a big rig to topple over along Highway 111 in Palm Springs. Police say that happened around 930 yesterday morning, just north of the overture at Windy Point. A hazmat crew had to be called in to clean up a fuel leak, forcing the closure of one northbound lane for several hours, actually until about 1 p.m. yesterday. No injuries reported there. Now, hundreds of drivers are stranded on a mountain highway between L.A. and Bakersfield this morning. Heavy snow hitting that area. CHP shut down a 60-mile stretch of Highway 58 last night because of the storm. 58 was especially crowded at the time with growing concerns that a section of the I-5 would be closed at Grapevine because of the bad weather. So just remember, roads are most dangerous just after it rains. That's when the roads are very slick. So uh, drive cautiously and steer clear of the high wind areas on the west end of the valley. Uh, crews will be clearing the road over at Gene Autry. And if you're headed to Idlewild, make sure to have chains as you're traveling through the area. They are required at this time. For more on the winter storm, stay with CBS Local 2 on air and online at uh, cbslocal2.com at the Date Palm Overpass in Cathedral City. Samantha Cortese, CBS Local 2 News. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Sam. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. By the way, at last check, the Interstate 5, the Grapevine, is not closed. Uh, but if it does snow there, you'll know they'll have mm. issues over the Oh, grapevine. yes, you will. And Carlene, uh, we are getting close to being out of the, obviously, the rain part of it, but not the winds, huh? No, not talking. we're still talking about the winds for today. We're still actually talking about a chance we could see a few scattered showers for today, but for the most part, most of it will be said and done as we get into the evening hours. So we still have that area of low pressure, and it is still off the coast, still kind of moving through, so mainly just affecting most of the cloud cover pushing through. We do have still some snow in the works right now. Big Bear area getting some snow. San Bernardino. Also keep in mind there is a winter weather advisory for the Inland Empire. That's until about 6 a.m. this morning. And then as we get into later on today, there is a winter storm warning in effect for the mountains and that's until uh, noon. So we still have that going on as well as the wind conditions picking up mainly to the north as well to the east of I-10. Wind advisory in effect when shifting in the 20s and 30s gusts at 55. So more details in your complete forecast and the clearing coming up. Well, heavy rain did not stop hundreds of people from paying tribute to fallen San Bernardino County Sheriff's Detective Jeremiah McKay. Family and friends gathered last night at Ukaipa City Hall for a candlelight vigil honoring the man who officials say was killed in a shootout with Christopher Dorner last week. The support that we see out there for my son and the love that we see and the compassion that we see is just uh, incredible. It does lift our spirits. And it reminds me that Jeremiah was, uh, was the type of guy that wanted to make a difference. Mm, McKay leaves behind his wife and two young children. Funeral services are planned for tomorrow morning at the San Manuel Amphitheater in San Bernardino. Detective uh, McKay's father seemed very gracious uh, and very poised uh, in, in sharing those um, uh, those sentiments there. We certainly uh, wish the best uh, for the family there. Yeah. All right, investigators in Orange County trying to figure out what caused a man to go on a shooting rampage. He killed two people before turning the gun on himself. Police say it all started yesterday morning when 20-year-old Ali Syed shot and killed a woman at his parents' home in Ladera Ranch. Officers say he then carjacked several vehicles and tested, killing two drivers and injuring several bystanders. Authorities say they located Syed in the city of Orange where he shot and killed himself when officers tried to approach him. Back here in the desert, two men could face the death penalty for brutally murdering an Indio man back in 2008. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Daniel Cervantes, guilty. Yesterday, separate juries announced they found Carlos Cer uh, Contreras and Daniel Cervantes each guilty of first degree murder for the death of Daniel Kuzawa. He died in a shooting that happened four years ago in Thermal. Special circumstance allegations of murder make Contreras and Cervantes eligible for the death penalty. They will both return to court in the next few weeks. 
Olympic track star Oscar Pistorius is back in a South African courtroom this morning. He faces charges of premeditated murder and the death of his girlfriend. Today is day two of a bail hearing. Prosecutors say they do not want Pistorius to go free because they fear he might leave the country. They say he has offshore bank accounts and had a home in Italy that he could flee to. Also this morning, police said in court that they found two boxes of testosterone and needles in the bedroom of Oscar Pistorius. The defense lawyer for the Olympian says it was actually a, quote, herbal remedy and not a banned substance. Hmm. Well, shifting gears now, our friends from Loving All Animals are here this morning with a pet looking for a good home. We'll introduce you to them next. But first, it's time for our pet pick of the week. Meet Winston, the Cocker Spaniel from Ooh, India. What a good looking Serious coach. looking face. Yeah, like Cutie that little, patootie. Uh, little hair, choppy haircut up on top here. <laughs> well, we want to see your pet. If you have a picture of your, your pooch, send your pics to news at cbslocal2.com. And, well, it could be a cat, too, or a bird. Your pet, we want to see, and it could be featured on our pet pick of the week. All right, Carlene, you got a lot of stuff on that uh, satellite weather radar there. You got arrows and the word cold and clouds and, and pretty white pictures, stuff and green right, Tom? stuff. It's all kinds of stuff on that, that map there. Stuff is definitely stuff. one. That's one word we can use to describe everything going on. Area of low pressure and a cold front that's moving through. We have this cold air filtering in. So as we go into today, we still have chances with the snow as well as a few passing showers along the valley floor. So we have the snow mainly lingering over the mountain areas right now. Big Bear still with a winter storm warning in effect until noon this afternoon. But the area of low pressure will start to move into Arizona and most of the precipitation will be concentrated around that low. So the higher elevations getting the snow and also some shower activity, a passing shower or two. We still have a chance of that in the desert for today with that cold air filtering through. So temperatures today will be lower than yesterday as the storm system does pass. Wind conditions also still picking up. So we're talking about the 20s and the teens as we get into our afternoon around 1 p.m. So 20 miles per hour desert hot spring in the 20s right below the Banning Pass, hitting the teens along the desert floor, and then that will continue as we go into tomorrow. So still, we'll have that uh, wind advisory lifted, but winds will still be picking up for tomorrow. 25 miles per hour desert hot springs around 4 p.m. and hitting those 20s in the high desert teens that will be in the lower desert. As we get into tomorrow, still talking about the fact that we'll have the winds lit, still lurking around, but we do have that wind advisory expiring tonight. So mainly affecting just to the north and the east of of Interstate uh, 10. Keep in mind that we'll have the wind shifting about 20 to 30 miles per hour, gusts about 55. Winter storm warning in effect all the way until noon today and a winter weather advisory in effect until 6 a.m. this morning and that's for the IE. Taking a look at your temperatures for today, a little bit cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we hit a high of 65 degrees in Palm Springs, 62 today at 2 p.m. and 65 degrees in Indio. East Valley didn't get too much for precipitation yesterday, but actually Palm Springs got a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. So we did have the rain dropping yesterday and for today only a chance we could see a few passing showers. 62 degrees will be the high. We'll have some clouds sticking around as we go into the weekend forecast. Warming up once again back into those 70s, the normal range for this time of the year. But chilly in the morning as overnight lows sit in the 40s. Back to you too. Mm, definitely a chilly, breezy kind of day mm -hmm. today. Well, it's time for our birthdays, and we want to wish a very happy birthday to our friend David Nars from Indian Wells. Happy birthday, David. Yeah, Dave's a friend and a good man, looking terrific there in his picture. Hey, if you want to celebrate your birthday, by the way, happy birthday, David. If you want to celebrate your birthday or that of a loved one, send all the information, name, where you live, the city, maybe your age. Send it all to birthday at cbslocal2.com and we'll help you celebrate. And don't forget, on Friday, we're going to draw a winner from this week's birthdays for a delicious cake from the Mirage Inn. All right, uh, our friends from Loving All Animals, we're running a little bit late, uh, but they are now here this morning. We'll introduce you to a cute pet here looking for a good home and promise you coming up next. be an issue. I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Charlotte Lastly from Loving All Animals joins us this morning with Brog 
Bravo, <laughs> who is looking for a new home. And Bravo apparently has adopted me or is trying yes. to adopt Tom Tucker over there. <laughs> this is one cute little guy. He is a sweetheart. What do you, um, what do you guess his mix is here? He's probably a Pomeranian mixed with a long-haired Chihuahua. Oh, that's why you yeah, love me. He's a cutie. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> oh, he is precious. He literally jumped out of her arms into mine, and he's trying desperately to get to Tom, he who's over there. He loves attention. <laughs> um, how long have you had this guy? Oh, we've had him now for uh, about three months at the shelter. Oh, no, he yeah, must he's fight at home. He's a, a kisser, too. Yes, he but, is a kisser. Hey, dude. Seriously, <laughs> let's don't make out. It's the early morning show, okay? <laughs> let's talk about you. Um, what can we do if uh, somebody at home wants to adopt this Well, you know baby? what? I'll tell you what. We're having a very special event this Sunday, February the 24th. <laughs> it's the uh, Faith, Hope, and Pups oh, uh, event. Do you and think he's a puppy? Well, no, maybe not quite a pup. He's about a year and a half, maybe close to a two-year-old. Um, but he's going to be there. Oh, he's going to be there awesome. along with a bunch of other friends. So, and, and where's the event? The event's going to be at the El Dorado Polo Club in mm -hmm. Indio. There's 10 tickets left. That's it? That's it. Just uh -oh. 10 tickets uh -oh. left Here. for this special event. <laughs> Bravo, Bravo took my mic off, uh -oh. okay? Why he not only is making that? out with Why me this morning, he's taking my mic off. <laughs> you can't do that. Okay, so the, the event is on the date again? It's uh, February the 24th, Sunday, this Sunday. There's only 10 tickets left, and it's a uh, polo match, and there's going to be a lot of dogs there for adoption. Can you bring your own pup as well to, uh, to, to integrate, like try to get them to see if they mix well? You know what? I would say not to. However, you can bring your pup over to the shelter because there's a dog park there, and it, it, it just makes for a much better uh, meet and greet over at the dog park. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, and, and how much are the tickets? The tickets are $50. And oh, this is what Bianca's yes, doing. Of course, sure our is. very special Bianca Ray has and put this all together. And she loves this doggy, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, this well, doggy reminds her of her dog. I bet <laughs> of Jack, the famous Jack. Well, yes. so it's this Sunday at the Polo Grounds. We love and and Bianca brought in the party favors for all the tables yesterday, so Ooh. they're very cool. So <laughs> hopefully get these last 10 tickets that are out there last 10 and tickets. maybe adopt Bravo. Thank you, you know, Charlotte, exactly. so much. Come adopt the best friend. <laughs> That's right. And meet all the other doggies that are up for adoption. And, of course, you can always call Loving All Animals at the number on your screen. I'll be right back. Oh, you're yeah. so cool. Asian markets got a boost from signs of recovery from world economies. Tokyo's Nikkei gained nearly 1% to close at a 52-month high. Hong Kong's Sang Seng added half a percent. The stock market is on track for its seven straight weekly gain. The Dow climbed nearly 54 points, while the Nasdaq added 21. The White House will reveal today how it's going to strike back at China following a series of cyber attacks targeting U.S. government and corporate secrets. Officials say the Obama administration is considering fines, penalties and trade restrictions. A Virginia-based cybersecurity firm discovered a secret Chinese military unit behind years of U.S. cyber attacks. China has denied any involvement. And Apple was the target of a hack attack at the tech company's California headquarters. Apple says malware infected a small number of its Mac computers used by employees. The tech giant says it was similar to an attack on Facebook that happened earlier this week. BP will not have to pay penalties for all of the more than 200 million gallons of oil that spilled into the Gulf of Mexico back in 2010. The U.S. government agreed not to fine BP for 34 million gallons the company captured before entering the Gulf. Fines for all the rest of the oil will be in the billions. The struggling U.S. Postal Service has come up with a way to generate some much-needed income, a clothing line. It's called Rain, Heat and Snow and will include accessories. This isn't the first time the post office has put its stamp on clothing. In the 1980s, it sold neckties and T-shirts with images of postage, postage stamps on them. That's your Money Watch. For more, stay with CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm America Ferrari. Well, it is time again for your desert deal of the day, and today it is half off lunch at Trio Restaurant in Palm Springs, a $20 value for 10 bucks. Yeah, I think you owe me lunch. Let's go do it. <laughs> to take advantage, go to DesertRealDeals.com, buy the coupon, print it out, and take it with you. Your top headlines are just minutes away, but first, a look at what is coming up this morning on CBS This Morning.
Ahead on CBS This Morning, police officers breaking the speed limit. New video shows how one officer got away with it despite causing a deadly crash. Plus the high-tech pain-free breakthrough that could help protect you from the deadliest form of skin cancer. Those stories and more when we see you at 7 o'clock. Time now for another, another look at your top headlines this morning. The cause of a fire at a mobile home park in Palm Springs remains under investigation this morning. It broke out yesterday afternoon and the flames quickly spread to three units, destroying the units there. Fire officials say six adults and 11 children are without homes this morning and the Red Cross is now assisting them. Two men could face the death penalty for brutally murdering an Indio man in 2008. Yesterday, separate juries announced they found Carlos Contreras and Daniel Cervantes each guilty of first-degree murder for the death of Daniel Kuzawa. Special circumstance allegations of murder made Contreras and Cervantes eligible for the death penalty. They will both return to court in the next few weeks. And a winter storm hanging over much of the West Coast is causing plenty of problems around California. Also here in the desert, high winds kicked up uh, yesterday, making it tough for some drivers and covering some valley roadways in a thick blanket of sand, including Gene Autry. Bulldozers had to come in and clear it away. You know, Carlita, I didn't even know it had rained until this morning when I tried to let my dogs out and they refused to go. Really? You weren't yeah. listening to the weather report no, yesterday? No, I'm saying, I, no, no, no. Ooh, I didn't say I didn't know it was going to rain. I said uh, I didn't know it did rain. Oh, it did. Yes, okay. it did. <laughs> for today, oh. you want to take it outside? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, it is going to be still on the breezy side today, and we will be right back with more news after this.